Thank you to the speakers and moderator. In the same context of building a resilient supply chain, I now welcome Mr. Ronald Pio Vincenzi, CEO of United States Pharmacopoeia, to give his special address on insights on medical supply chain vulnerability. Hello, and thank you, BioAsia 2021, for the chance to make this presentation talking about the resiliency of the medicine supply chain. It's my pleasure to um, offer these insights on behalf of USP, um, and I look forward to participation in the meeting myself. So I'm going to begin by sharing my presentation. And if you don't mind, I'll start with just a few thoughts for about one minute or so on who is USP, the United States Pharmacopeia. Uh, USP was founded in 1820, just over 200 years ago, with the mission to improve global health through improving the quality of medicines through the tools of public standards, capability building, and advocacy. Again, I'll focus on the quality and safety of, of medicines and food ingredients. Fast forward to today, and this snapshot gives you a sense of, of where USP is valued in the world. Uh, last year, uh, we shipped USP reference standards, physical standards, to 22,000 laboratories around the world. Um, a remarkable, a remarkable uh, way to describe how widespread drug manufacturing and, and medicine testing is in the world today. Our USP staff represented through the blue dots located in uh, more than 10 sites, um, three, of, three of which um, are full laboratory sites for conducting our work and importantly and increasingly engaging with the local community. We're really pleased to have as our second global site in Hyderabad, India, where it represents um, over 20% over of our global staff. And now for my talk, insights into the medicine supply chain, and in particular, discussing vulnerabilities and some potential solutions as we look forward. So vulnerabilities, what, are, what drives vulnerabilities in our supply chain? Um, people talk about complexity. So on the left-hand side of this slide, I talk about some of the root causes. Increased pressure on margins, in particular, and especially for generics. Insufficient incentives for quality. It's not clear or built in for those who are going the extra mile to ensure quality, that they're not necessarily rewarded for those efforts. And third, regulatory and also logistical hurdles to prevent agile responsiveness to market events. In other words, the, the environment is such that as the world changes, as demand surges, it's difficult to quickly be able to meet those needs. So what does it mean? It means that the value and the very good reasons that just-in-time manufacturing creates for efficiency also reduces redundancy. And that lack of redundancy makes it very difficult to absorb demand or supply shocks to the medicine supply chain. It also leads to more outsourcing of ingredients and even final product manufacturing and sometimes to similar sources that make for a more consolidated supply chain, even when on paper it appears very diverse. And lastly, and something we'll talk about later, a lack of transparency, limiting the ability of others, of stakeholders, to have good information as to where the medicines are coming from, where ingredients are coming from as well. So we think about in particular when the medicine supply chain is most vulnerable is when we see shortages. It's also one of the more measurable quantities to show um, a shortcoming or a vulnerability in the supply chain. So a couple of thoughts here. Um, USP conducted a survey with uh, FIP, the International Federation of, of, uh, of Pharmacists, and asked about drug shortages. Um, and that's the survey we did just a few months ago, referred back to the previous year, and 85% of respondents said they had experienced a direct shortage in their distribution of medicine to patients just in that last year. 85%. So this is a significant problem, and it's a global challenge. Um, it's clear from the data I present here, and this is, um, uh, this is a very critical point, that there's a strong link between quality challenges and drug shortages. On the left is US data, on the right is for Europe, for Europe. In both cases, you see it very clear that quality issues are a major, if not majority, driver of shortages. Um, there are other drivers, increases in demand, uh, natural disasters, which are well known. Um, but to have over 50% or at least 50% um, 
due to quality issues suggests that addressing quality and the sustainable sustainability of quality is critical to be able to reduce shortages. So what do we do about this? Um, this is a, a, a slide with five ideas here, one of which in the middle, I'll describe a little bit in further detail. Um, but let me start. What do we mean when we say foster more, not less supply chain diversity? It's often said that the, the complex supply chain is one of the problems to manage for, for supply chain security. But I would also posit that that diversity is one of the sources of strength. It's the ability for one manufacturer to make up for, for a shortcoming in another. It's more places, more choices to be able to purchase. And so having strong, high quality and diverse supply chain can be a real strength. So we believe to foster, to not worry about your supply chain diversity. In fact, we have done a, a, a survey of our standards use during the pandemic um, and nearly three quarters of users of our standards reported being concerned that ingredient shortages may impact their ability to fill orders. In other words, not enough, um, not enough diversity in the ingredient manufacturing is worrying finished dose manufacturers for their ability to maintain supply. The second point on here, manufacturing capacity for critical medicines, in particular here, things that you might find on, say, the WHO um, critical medicines list, as an example. Uh, more and more people are looking for ways to be able to, to have a, a stronger resiliency, for, in particular for critical medicines, who also tend to exist on the list of being the, the most inexpensive and, in many cases, the most likely to suffer from shortages. We mentioned continuous manufacturing, or more broadly, advanced manufacturing as one potential solution to create more rapid ways to, to rise up and meet the needs of some of the critical medicines. Um, and advanced manufacturing investments are being made, uh, including by governments in the US, India, and China as they look forward to the future. Let me skip the third point here for just a minute. We'll come back to that. The fourth is a crisis contingency planning. Um, this is basically just looking ahead to say, rather than trying to predict what problem might occur, Look at the types of problems and create contingency plans around them. It's impossible to predict the next hurricane, but it's absolutely possible to, to predict the impact of a potential hurricane and to create mitigation plans and workarounds to prevent drug shortages and other supply chain disruptions. And finally, strengthening of regulatory systems. This one is one I'm particularly passionate about and USP plays an active role the more countries around the world whose regulatory systems and ability to conduct quality assurance for their own medicines, as well as the medicines manufactured in those countries are rising up to international levels, then the more diversity, come back to the first point on this list, the more diversity in the supply chain we can achieve and the stronger the overall system can become. So helping to, to raise up in lower and middle income countries, their regulatory systems um, is actually a benefit to everyone around the world. And lastly, a third bullet point about transparency and data sharing. We believe that the only way that these other points can work, the only way these other solutions can be effective is if there's enough information to make good decisions. So to that end, it will be able to contribute, although not, of course, the only solution. USP is now building a system to proactively identify and mitigate supply chain risk, a database, an active database of of millions of data points over several different databases linked together to create a global snapshot of the world's medicines, where they're coming from, what kind of ingredients uh, are being supplied and, and going to where to help identify and be able to measure resilience, to be able to use it as a data source to conduct risk assessment, to make good choices for purchasing, um, and then to even create choices upstream in the manufacturing process. So really excited about this new work, and I'm gonna pause here and play a uh, just a two minute video um, as a, a way to show you a little bit of what this medicine uh, asset looks like, and then I'll come in to say thank you. Oh, I apologize. Uh, w one more slide I wanted to show um, to, as a driver. Before the, um, as a good example of why not having enough information uh, can become really troublesome. Uh, on labels in the United States, this is a US example, we studied labels of 40,000 uh, medicines in the marketplace. And of those 40,000 medicines, a very small percentage of those medicine labels would indicate the information that we're describing. 
the critical information of API manufacturer or even the finished dose manufacturer themselves. This is due to many reasons of repackaging, repurposing, um, different kinds of regulations. But what we get at is that what's available to us today isn't sufficient for many of the decisions that we're looking to make. Thank you so much, and please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions. I'd be happy to connect you to the right team, including about the new uh, medicine supply map. Thank you all very much, and please enjoy your excellent conference at BioAsia 2021. Thank you so much, Mr. Pio Vincenzi, for that special address. Stay tuned for the next session.